Welcome to Recently Logged, where this week we're talking about Oppenheimer. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Without the beeping, we I didn't we, know where we were going. We, we had no audio cue, so we just it's, jump in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but here we are. We're back again. Talking about Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, but not, not the one you probably Directed by of. Christopher Nolan. <laughs> not the Christopher Nolan one. <laughs> We're talking about the uh, fringe character from Shane Acker's Nine. Which I did not know he was called. <laughs> is Opp- named Alan Ho- Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, <laughs> uh, which I think really just adds to the uh, subtlety the, of Nine. The, the beautiful subtlety that they've worked into the DNA of Nine. It's a great, it's uh. a great touch. But anyway, I, my name is Robbie. And I'm Micah. And we're talking about nine. For those who don't know, we're talking about nine. Uh, (laughs) It's a. I don't know. I don't know how many people know about nine. You know, it seems like kind of a obscure movie. Uh, If you're listening to this, if you're listening to this, we're 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 not we're not dropping the series. We're still (laughs) doing a Diary of a Wimpy Kid, but often with our series, if you look back. Uh, we we like take breaks in the middle. Yeah, I try try and break it up. So if you haven't seen the main series, then you're not just like yeah if you bombarded seen with a bunch of, of movies. Kids, you're not just seen. like oh look at this Diary of Wimpy Kid trash. Exactly. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, tell the people what they need to know about the movie Nine. All right. All right, so we're talking about Nine, which is a 2009 film. How many times are we going to say Nine in this It's 100 and, I mean, it's an hour and 19 minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's one of the few, uh, it's one of the few PG-13 uh, animated movies. That I know uh, there of. Are very, there are very few out there. Indeed. Uh, it, it is, the little IMDb description is, a ragdoll that awakens in a post-apocalyptic future holds the key to humanity's salvation. Who'd have thought it? You can rent it on Prime <laughs> for three and ninety nine. Three. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it got nine nominations for awards. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's gonna turn into one of those conspiracy theory podcasts. <laughs> its cast features Elijah Wood nice. as nine. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, Jennifer Connelly, Crispin Glover, Christopher Plummer, yeah, uh, Martin Landau. John C. Riley, and 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 others. There, there <laughs> and more. others. There's only like 13 people in the cast. Uh, it's directed by Shane Acker. Yeah. Written by Pamela Petler nice. and Shane Acker. That's a good name. <laughs> and Ben Gluck. Nice. Is that is that that's all of it, Micah? That's it's the crew. That's the crew. The gang. <laughs> that's the gang. <laughs> The top re- user review on IMDb gave it a nine out oh of ten. Oh my goodness, Micah. <laughs> I'm just looking for more nines. It released on... Oh, oh my get goodness. Get this. It released on September, the ninth month of the oh year, nine, 2009. <laughs> so it released nine, you know, nine, nine. I think I saw on one of the posters it said nine, nine, nine. I'm like, what? But that makes sense then. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay i think they got a little carried away <laughs> but anyway let's uh let's get into what we thought of nine let's do it so robbie yes of recently logged <laughs> as featured on robbie oh no <laughs> what are your thoughts on nine. On nine. Nine. Uh, what to say about nine? What to say about it? Uh, it's a very good uh, animated film. Very I good. I would say. Um, it, it's a very unique animated film, too, I very think. Very unique. I mean, we mentioned that it was PG-13. And oh, it... my gosh. Ravi, we're, we're recording this at nine in the morning. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We mentioned that it was PG-13. And it is uh, a bit darker than most of your typical animated Indeed. movies. Even even most PG-13 yeah. animated movies, because yeah. most of the time it's PG-13 for, like, crude humor or something. I was about to say, this this one, you get, like, dolls getting their souls sucked out, like, and then their bodies collapsing to the floor. It's, it's very, it, it can be very scary, it can be very disturbing, um, and I that's one of the things I appreciate about it. It has a very... Uh, nice sense of 
stakes and tone and everything. So that one of its stronger features. I definitely like the world building a lot. A lot of its ideas are really there. I, I'm not usually in a post-apocalyptic kind of guy, but not a steampunk man. Yeah, yourself. not a steampunk man usually. <laughs> but this this is cool. I like it a lot. Um, I like the character designs. I like the world building. I like the how well thought through a lot of the like different world mechanics are. It's nice. Um, it's 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 a very like indie video game kind of film if that makes any sense like it i don't know it feels like it could be very easily adapted into a video game okay so so meet the robinson (laughs) came out in 2007 so nine just ripped this off because the future that doris makes looks exactly like this. although to be fair micah the short film that shane acker originally made that this is based off of um is it came out in 2007 so same year. So he saw Meet the Robinsons. <laughs> he saw the Doris future and was like, I need to make that. <laughs> we'll go with that, sure. But what did you, what did you think of Nine? What did I think of Nine? See, I, I'm very torn up about Nine. I'm, I'm torn to pieces, to shreds, <laughs> to tiny little bits. Tiny little uh, canvas pieces <laughs> that have been stitched uh, together. Because I love Nine. Um, yeah. Who doesn't? It's a cool movie. Uh, because Nine is, like, the coolest. It's got a lot of really, really cool ideas that I very much like. Yeah. It's got a lot... It's got really unique art direction. I love the design of all of the creatures, especially the little snaky boy. It feels iconic, um, really. Like No, it has, like, the designs are so memorable. Really, a really nice, um, like, cohesive design for all of its characters. And, and, I, and I like the world building a lot, the stakes that they set up and everything. Yeah. Um, I like the cast. I li- like, I like so much about... Oh. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention the uh, local. I cast. like the characters, <laughs> um, but I think the screenplay is really, really lacking. No, yeah, I I forgot to mention like my one problem with it because I didn't even I didn't even say my rating. Uh, I gave it a four out of five for for the feature length uh, nine. Yeah, I gave it I gave it a three and a half out of five. Um, there's just so much about the structure and the pacing yeah. and just the story itself that seems pretty sloppy. No, honestly, even compared to the short film, <laughs> right? I was gonna say honestly, the um, structuring and stuff like that are really the only thing holding it back from being like animated masterpiece, you know. <laughs> but like, it, it's pretty rough, so it doesn't make the character stuff hit as hard. It doesn't make the plot beats work as well Well, no because of the way it's written and i and i like how you put this you said it's extremely derivative it is is, no it is especially in its character beats (laughs) oh yeah um because none of its character beats feel like there's there are moments they don't feel very earned there are moments with like one where like nine is like you're just a a scared old you're just an old man and a fool (laughs) He, he, he pretty much says that um which is like yeah sure yeah he is but, like, Elijah Wood, Mr. Nine, has been there for, like, 30 seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's just a lot of... It's a lot of stuff like that that feels very derivative of, like, other stories. And I, w- I wouldn't mind derivative plot beats. I love movies that pay homage to, like, older stories and stuff like that. But they don't dedicate enough time to most of them to make them land the way yeah. they should. Or you know, like space them out enough that they feel natural to the progression yeah. of all the characters. But do you have any any questions to really to really start us off, Remy? Um, I do. Oh, he does. He <laughs> this never is, has this is unusual. <laughs> he probably doesn't even have a favorite scene or sequence. <laughs> no, I don't. But I'm thinking like <laughs> uh, but I was gonna ask what do you think of the uh military stuff in this the military it, stuff. It's a post apocalyptic movie, but it is also I like on top of that, it is a post apocalyptic movie because of the Matrix. The war. <laughs> there's a there's a big war um, against the humans you know, from the machines. Obvi- obviously that part is very derivative. Yeah. Again, the scientist that that made the evil <laughs> robot that destroyed humanity is named Oppenheimer. I swear. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think it's uh, that specific element is derivative in a really good way. Yes, I was um, going to mention that I actually really like the military angle it, that they take here. Because they use all of this derivative imagery and stuff, and, and A, it just makes for a cool aesthetic and world yeah. as they kind of combine uh, the steampunk setting uh, with the robot military and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and it crosses over really cool stuff. 
Um, but then it also works and allows it to really tie in well into a lot of the creepy robot stuff and like makes sense for a lot of the creepy robot stuff yeah. and it feels really natural and like a, a cool progression of the world that doesn't feel like anything is tacked on exactly with the way they build the world out yeah no i was gonna i was gonna mention too like the uh, robot designs and everything using recycled parts it, it i don't know it, I, the robot designs are all very very cutting cool. cutting up the corpses rebby to get the bones to make the robot <laughs> dude i can't believe they just had like a whole human skeleton just laying there and they're like yeah we're gonna chop it <laughs> but yeah a lot of dead people in this movie. right but yeah no um i was i i think the war stuff is actually one of the few derivative elements that actually works pretty well here because um, they use the imagery in a very evocative way and it actually feels he says comrades <laughs> he says comrades <laughs> okay and the state <laughs> the only time it gets a little too on the nose is with the um like political flashback films they're so they're 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 good but they... he, he says comrades he says comrades and he refers to where they're at as the state yeah, you can, you'll never guess what the uh, flag hanging in all of the different military buildings is supposed to be like. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 uh, see, I don't even, it is very on the nose for that little <laughs> no, it video, is. but I think that video is fun. I don't no, think it like takes that. away from, because, because it's, you it's know, kind it's, of pulpy. it's I like not it. that self-serious of <laughs> <No>. a story, <laughs> which I appreciate because if this thing took itself too seriously, it would be kind of miserable. A lot of what makes this work as a kind of violent, creepy, ragdoll movie is that the cast and the characters never take themselves too seriously. I mean, so, I, so it feels like, well, like, I don't know the way I, they're written. I um, guess. Because it feels like characters from, like, your average run-of-the-mill PG kids movie existing in this ultra-violent... Oh, um, that, I, I guess I get what more you're saying now, yeah. 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 yeah so you and, and i think that definitely leaves a lot of levity that is much needed oh yeah for sure i was about to say if this was like all like stoic stuff all the time it would get very old very fast <laughs> but no like the some of the character stuff does work pretty well it's no, just yeah. a lot of the like actual major shifting points and beats don't hit right i think pretty much all of the stuff with one misses <laughs> yeah no i i think one was honestly kind of a misfire here like just from a screen point level i i our screen point <laughs> screen play, <laughs> screen play level. and see i was actually going to mention this because one makes sense of why they wanted him to be there mm -hmm. if they played into one of the elements that i feel like the screenplay just kind of forgot <laughs> it just kind of glazes over because i feel like the screenplay and like what they're going for with the stories again this is the scientist man's soul split up into different yeah. pieces yeah so it kind of has different parts of him in each one and if they kind of played up to that more instead of just being like ah this is the strong one <laughs> this is the agile one. they have one defining <laughs> this trait, is like... the stuck up one <laughs> uh <laughs> If they would have like played up to the fact that they're all different parts of one guy's soul, then this could have like they could have played up the fact that one is the part that like led to the downfall of the machines because you know he's like oh the machines were born of me as well yeah and I was too flawed of a person so the machines were flawed yeah I know um, I mean I get what they're going so if for. they play the like like one as the same flaw as the machines or something I don't know to tie that in some way more so and it would just make more sense to have him as a character like that because otherwise you just have this guy who's again extremely derivative he's got like the Pope hat <laughs> <That's right. laughs> they, they hide in a cathedral <laughs> like yeah and, and it, it's all for for nothing essentially because there's nothing there there's like nine of them <laughs> and like two of them are dead for the whole movie yeah no I mean <laughs> so there's no like big yeah he's not he's not misleading anyone it's literally just him five and seven seven or eight I think it's seven uh just hanging out in a cathedral it's not like this big oh uh, no six, six is the one six is there too yeah. yeah um 
but he's not really there but like it's just them <laughs> kind of like hanging out like there's no like evil leading them astray yeah there i was about to say because his his whole arc is he he's like disillusioned to his self-righteousness and like there's there's almost no motivating factor behind that arc. I was about to say he's a little rude about it, but he's not especially <laughs> wrong for most of exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Most of the time, if they've gone outside, they've just died. The only like <laughs> expressive evil thing he did was send five or not five two out to die. Yeah. Which were like like they didn't tell us until way in, which they just glossed over. <laughs> yeah. He's like he sent them to die, and they're like, dang. But then they just kind of move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's yeah i mean he's probably the worst like no, weakest he's the, written he's the weakest of written the character but he's very ensemble but he's very what's the word emblematic i don't know what you're I going think, for i don't know if that's a word <laughs> um but very he very much shows i think a lot of the problems that the screenplay has not that like it's inherently a bad idea no they're percent yeah or even that it's a hundred percent bad execution um, but that it's just like, it doesn't, weak. it's not as fully thought through <laughs> as it could be. Yeah. Which that's how I feel about a lot of the themes this touches on and stuff like that. But I don't know. It's a, it's a strange movie. No, it definitely is. <laughs> uh, we watched it for the first time. I don't know, like two or three years ago yeah, now. It was, a, it was a decent bit ago yeah. at this point. And I remember just pretty distinctly how, um, like interesting it was but also how kind of dry a lot of it feels yeah. and it was a bit better on a rewatch I thought, I thought about this before we rewatched it i was like man it kind of is like memorable but extremely forgettable <laughs> exactly because the plot itself is mostly filled with stuff that just doesn't matter doesn't make much sense and doesn't have much interesting plot points no i honestly um when someone asked me about the plot of this movie i was like i thought they were just being hunted by the dog thing the whole time i couldn't i didn't remember the <laughs> like the machine the really? brain yeah <laughs> i was like oh dang i forgot about this guy <laughs> and he's like the big <laughs> A bad evil force. No, I remember the, movie. the machine, but I'm just saying, like, I didn't like r- remember anything the characters do. Exactly. Yeah, like, you remember it for its, as we mentioned, iconic elements, yeah, like its, its art direction and stuff, yeah. and its design, and its vocal and cast. Its vocal cast. Um, but I honestly forgot about a lot of the other elements of this movie. Which, dude, the, the oh, man, the creature <laughs> designs are so They're cool, so good. Like, the <laughs> from the word go, the dog design, super, right? super, super sick yeah uh, it's very it's a very good way to get you into to how creepy they'll be um <laughs> and then you get like the bird thing i kept thinking like maybe they'll come across like a monster that's not like scary like maybe it's just like a nice little robot guy <laughs> and, but no they're always terrifying <laughs> dude and then they step it up because they take the ragdoll oh my goodness and then build the baby that doll sequence is head really good thingy that like <laughs> uses the corpse to put people into a trance while it ties them up and like uh, dude it's horrifying i love that that is my favorite creature in the movie is the little snake guy that sequence is um, really really good like when he starts picking them all off yeah that's man, man. And, and like the key the way he like opens up and ties them up and yeah like See, that's where that's where this really shines. And I honestly, like, I think I'll stand by this. I think nine would have made a better video game than it does a movie. Yeah, there are very <laughs> there are very few movies that you run into because movie usually movies are just written very movie esque. Yeah. Uh, but this one feels like Shane Acker had like a really, really good idea. He yeah. made a very cool short film. Oh yeah, I love and the was short like, film, man. Let's make a movie out of this. Oh, and then he kind of just, like, did that. He, like, made a movie. Like, exactly what he would think was a movie. I was about to say, he, it's not that he, like, didn't expand on his ideas enough, because he does, but I think he introduced too much without elaborating on it. Because, again, I think he was... It's just very... Yeah. I don't know if I don't know if any of the screenplay <laughs> team had worked on much more, but it feels like they hadn't. Like, it feels very just this is this is us making a movie yeah this is what a movie should have in it no for sure these are the plot points that the movie needs to have and i mean like like we keep saying they work to a certain point yeah yeah um interesting uh pamela petler was on the was on the screenplay for monster house corpse bride and the new adams family (laughs) oh interesting okay well that yeah no that makes sense then 
Because thinking about when this came out relative to like something like Monster House, it, it feels like a natural progression. Which I think, like honestly, that. Monster House and Corpse Bride are not that like no. are about the same level. I was as about to say Corpse Bride has a very similar problem to this. It has very good like iconography and imagery and a good like plot idea behind it, but, but it just kind of falls flat on it its just execution. Kinda, yeah, it just kind of muddles around <laughs> for most of its plot. <laughs> right, a um, lot of its runtime, it just kind of doing stuff. <laughs> Uh, but do you have a favorite scene or sequence? I might honestly, thinking back on it now, I might honestly go with like the snake attack. The that snake one, attack is it's so really good. good. Um, like honestly, I would probably just go with one of the monster attacks because they're all pretty great. Yeah, I was about to say one of my favorites, and I was <laughs> saying this to you earlier, um, is actually um, after they think they've killed the machine the first time. <laughs> Um, and like the, yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know, it's got such good staging it and does. stakes set up to this. I just don't think the fight after it is very good. No. Um, I was about to say it leads up to one of the weakest fights, but like the, the record rolls out mm-hmm. and it's like the music <laughs> is playing and five goes over and then he, he, like the record bounces down the hill and he's just out of view and he sees through the smoke, the moving of the machine as the music rises still. <laughs> and then like, oh and he runs it's a good sequence like it's you know in a video game that would be like a 10 of 10 sequence no i almost (laughs) made my review for this on letterboxd i kept waiting to shift into gameplay (laughs) right (laughs) um but no i just i'm really partial to uh when when like big action violent or like like not even action scenes but like violent scenes are done with like really loud like 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 the opening (laughs) of of uh, i think it's arkham knight uh, when you're burning <laughs> spoilers for our, the Arkham series, when you're burning Joker's corpse to Frank Sinatra, <laughs> it's really That's good. Funny. I just love stuff like that, um, and this very much tapped into that. But again, the fight afterwards is just kind of meh. Honestly, I think yeah. the best fights. I mean, all of the fights of the other creatures are good. They're though. good. Yeah, they like, have surprisingly good staging and escalation. Yeah, and like the snake, choreography. the snake fight is great. The dog fight <laughs> is great. The bird fight is even really fun. Yeah, I was about to say the bird fight is like surprisingly vertical and it keeps changing up like the disadvantage it's a good fight yeah no see and i and i mentioned while we were watching it that i was like oh it's like monster hunter because they gotta they gotta figure out the specific element because again this would make a great video great game. video game <laughs> because you'd have to learn the different elements to fight the different monsters <laughs> but yeah no i basically the end of the day you know, like nine, it just should have been a video game. It should have been a video game. Thank you for our coming to our TED <laughs> Talk, you Shane Acker. Um, you should have made a video game. <laughs> you still can. The opportunity is not passed. If you still own the rights to nine, get uh, out there. <laughs> so what do you think of, like, all the rest of the side characters? I know we talked about one, but, like... We talked about... Uh, there's a, there's an, it's an yeah. interesting collection of side cast in this. I was about to say, I, we can just mention, like, you were just talking about, like, the other uh, dolls yeah, or, like, the, the other human characters. Because I really like the scientist, actually. Yeah, I think I, like he's, I think he's a really... They, there's just enough of him that you, like... Mr. Offenheim's <laughs> John. <laughs> but there's just enough of him that you, like get a good feel for his character yeah, yeah, i like and, i like i don't him. know it's, it's a fun fun addition to the screenplay for sure but what do you think of of our many other doll characters <laughs> i think most of the other doll characters are kind of like weak sauce weak except sauce. for five i like five five is good two for however brief he is in the two movie for like five seconds. two two is good i guess uh, i like the performance for two i don't remember who plays him um but yeah no i mean Eight, I think, is kind of weird, like a weird addition, because like his characterization in the beginning is very Martin Landau for two. Yeah, yeah, he's good in this. Um, but like f- the characterization for eight at the beginning is kind of like this brute kind of guy, but like it doesn't really stick with that. It, it kind of he kind of flip flops no, back and forth again. He's very he's very derivative, and he stays as kind of like the brute yeah. character. But they also play up like the oh he's like he's stupid though. Yeah, and it's, it's very weird. I don't know. I I don't really like how he's handled in the screenplay. Three and four are very cool. If I'm thinking, of I like right. their idea. Yeah, yeah. I was about to say three and four are f- a fun addition. I, I'm glad they're not like too focused on they're they're in it just enough them them not talking is actually very good i was about to say i 
I don't know how many people have watched the short film that have also seen the feature length one, but having them the not film, speak, none of them talk. I was about to say none of them speak in the short film, and I think it's a lot more. It feels a lot more sinister and kind of hopeless yeah. in the short film. It's I, a lot more bleak with with the, with the writing team that was on this movie. I don't think they could have pulled it off. No, and I really no. like the vocal cast. No, yeah, I was about um, to say, um, but Elijah Wood is great in this. But no, as a concept, them being silent works very well, especially for again like the tension. And and the stakes and everything yeah it's just a lot more difficult to make a silent yeah film. <laughs> um but yeah no uh the characterization i think uh seven is kind of a sloppily written character too she's very derivative but All i mean are, you, you know it's it's kind of a a testament to like how derivative they are the fact that i can even remember which one is which like because right? they're yeah. all very like they're very one... distinct yeah but, like they're very like, distinct which it, that's good she's literally like that <laughs> that outside character who like got separated from the rest of the group and is now fighting on her own and she has her own little group she's taking care of yeah and, yeah and she's she's taken some of the imagery of the of the evil to like like she's just extremely derivative and like one of the there's things, good ideas one of my there, least though. favorite moments in this entire <laughs> entire stupid <laughs> screenplay even though i love this movie don't get me wrong uh is when she's introduced and they do like with elijah wood's character he's like oh <laughs> and they do that several times like there's gonna be a freaking love interest or something which like shut up <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you didn't want the love subplot my god there is no subplot they're literally doing it because again every other because movie yeah. that has that kind of character <laughs> and you're new to the setting kind of character for an example the fish out of water for an example yeah. let's go let's <laughs> let's use free birds as an example free birds, free birds. Oh, you man. have your you have your reggie, <laughs> you have Re reggie. <laughs> is this really the best example <laughs> reggie goes <laughs> to the, the turkey hollow and he meets all these intense birds who are running this thing but he has his ways they're gonna change it and he <laughs> finds what's her face who wants to live outside of the rules and she and then the rebel <laughs> romance the rebel and that's, the fish out of water <laughs> reggie that's my example and like it knew this the screenplay people were like yeah and then he sees her and then he's like yeah but they're freaking ragdolls derived from the same man's soul. Right. That have no reason to have any romantic injury. <laughs> yeah, no, I thought it, I thought it was actually kind of an interesting decision because, um, like, it mentions that it, it's, like, different pieces of his soul. And, like, just, like, one-ninth of his soul is, like, this weird <laughs> female character who is really good at killing people. <laughs> Aggressively good at killing people. I'm like, things. I mean... Don't we all have that part of us? I say, I think we all have that inside of us. I just, I don't know. I thought it was a funny well, yeah, decision. Yeah, I know. But, like, again, <laughs> like, that that really bothered me in the movie. And, like, that's exactly the kind of thing that I think is this is this entire screenplay's biggest problem. Yeah. Is it's just like, oh, this thing is supposed to happen. Because, honestly, I, I mentioned this earlier. I think you would have, like, an almost perfect, like, steampunk, like, dark animated film if you fixed the screenplay for this yeah because all of its other so elements, elements are great dude. like the animation looks dated sure but it didn't have that big of a budget when it came out but even just like the plot the base yeah. plot is a good idea it's a great idea it's just <laughs> structured like trash too i forgot to mention that. oh yeah no we the, hadn't talked about the structure the way it's plotted out and structured is really weird because it starts off like fish out of water and you think you're gonna have like some time to simmer in like the cathedral and with the new environment maybe get some character drama going with like one and nine but like they immediately go off to try and rescue two yeah i was about to say it's, like there's no there's yeah. no build like, yeah nothing anything, nothing ever. really builds to its um, everything is just point. going and going yeah. and going and it doesn't work because it feels like it's going and going and going and they're doing nothing it feels aimless really um, for a lot of it because again yeah exactly it comes to like this fish out of water cathedral <laughs> cult thingy that you would imagine yeah in a, in a very derivative post-apocalyptic story which i wouldn't mind um, but <laughs> that sounds get, cool <laughs> again it's just not well thought through there's yeah. like five there's like not even five there's like four of them there <laughs> And none of them seem that at odds with each other. They're just all kind of hanging out. Right. <laughs> um, except for the fact that he sent two off to die. 
which again is given zero time and is only established later in the movie um and uh like then it's like immediately he's like we've got to go out and he's like but and he's like no we've got to go <laughs> and then they go and then it's like immediately they get to the thing and they do the thing and mm-hmm. he has the, they beat the they beat the dog and what's her face is now there and they found this stuff and they're like yeah yay team we won and I'm like, wow, what a great film. Uh, and then he puts the little amulet <laughs> yep. on there and two dies again. Uh, and then... Y- yeah, no, it's it's just like the plot makes sense when you say it like that. When you're like, because you were saying it just now. I'm like, yeah, that, like that's natural next plot point. But like... It that, just, happen, that happens in the first like 20 minutes. <laughs> I was about to say the progression of it and the spacing of them. It just doesn't mesh well. Like none of the none of the plot points seem to hit the way they should, Cause so none of the emotional stakes or character stakes really come off as being all that pressing yeah, or and I dramatic. Feel like they just didn't know what they wanted to do with it because yeah. you had so many different elements of like, oh, a a kind of cult esque post apocalyptic. I wish I honestly um, wish they would have just doubled down on the war stuff in the uh, cult to say, stuff and just to say, you that's have, it. You have that, else. which is which is a very common post apocalyptic <laughs> thing. And you have that, but you also have like oh the rebel <laughs> violent fighting team. Yeah, and then you have the romance the war, and then you have the weird <laughs> romance stuff, and then you have. The, the the machine and then you have like all of these different elements that theoretically could yeah. tie together into something cohesive and it's pretty cohesive as it goes yeah it's just it just doesn't fully work no, and it, no particular element fully works in it ju- yeah it never pulls it together the way i wish it which would. is really sad it because sad. it's a cool movie and i really <laughs> i still really like it no yeah i was about um, to say i i gave it a four out of five i bought the but, blu-ray for but pizza. i think <laughs> and i was thinking about this but i was like i was saying about this like the one big like show that i think um really shows how not great its structure and screenplay is Mm -hmm. is that this is an hour and 29 minutes it is 79 minutes (laughs) which is a short movie that is right and it feels so long uh it does it felt so long to me i don't i don't know about like long i would have i would have guessed that it was like a two hour movie it feels very sprawling and not in a good way (laughs) you feel like you're there for a long time because again nothing in particular is driving the plot at any given moment characters are just doing stuff and then the only time we do have drive every well i should say this every time it does have drive and there's a specific present motivation it's always resolved extremely quickly. Yeah. Like, even even the dog is killed within, like, the first 20 minutes when they first put the amulet. Right. Um, and... Yeah, no, you're right, though. A lot of the conflict plot points that are brought up are, like, resolved within the next couple scenes. Yeah, it's just a if very... If not sooner. <laughs> it's a very weird structure. I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't know why it was structured like this. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting movie. I, I'm... It's a very fun movie. Yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely give it a watch if you it's want very to. Creepy. Yeah, I was about to say the like, like we said, the stuff that's good about it is really, really good. So I would recommend watching yeah. it just based off of that. Um, um, though yeah. you know, you said you said the soul sucking was kind of creepier in the uh, in the f- short film. <laughs> they have like a little. They have like a little scream at this. It, but it chilling. wasn't. It's chilling. Michael. No, dude, I think it's creepier to see like it go through their eyes and then the empty eye sockets oh, after. Yeah, it sucks, the empty it eye goes, sockets. It only goes through their mouth in the short film the empty eye sockets with like the stretched out mouth is really unsettling in exactly the, in the movie version that's that's the that's the creepy <laughs> stuff man but yeah mm-hmm. man the horror stuff is really good in this yeah i wish it was <laughs> it's, it's like it's like epic mickey <laughs> to you. Yeah. here's another example another example that no one knows uh, with a really really great <laughs> strong imagery and ideas yeah and like you're like wow that's so cool it's got great atmosphere and really cool idea like just everything in there is like cool mm-hmm. but like it's no bendy in the ink machine <laughs> exactly you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know if anybody's gonna get the. Mike is like, metaphors. it's no obscure video game, but it's it's a slightly more obscure video game. 
Uh, I think I think you understand. I do, but that's because I've played both of those games. <laughs> uh, Epic Mickey is like it kind of it kind of seems like it's just kind of bouncing around. <laughs> its ideas are there. You have like the scientist, but you also have um, Oswald, and you've got like you got Mickey. It's kind of convoluted. It's, yeah, it's very convoluted. <laughs> it doesn't feel like the plot has much momentum other than Mickey just hanging out it just arbitrarily <laughs> changes settings whenever you finish a level um but like it has really really strong designs and mm-hmm. a really strong score and atmosphere and yeah. an idea and it's really cool go play epic mickey which it's a good game. again something like bendy and the ink machine has very similar stuff great score great designs very similar derivative style game yeah um but it has extremely tight story pacing horror mechanics bendy is so scary man it's a, it's a scary game it's a spooky game but go, it, go play bendy it never and feels too <laughs> rushed it never feels like it. so yeah what nine needed to be was bendy and the ink machine it's <laughs> funny and i'm right about this <laughs> well do you have anything else to add we've, uh, I, i've covered just about everything i wanted to uh, about did you want to mention anything in particular about the vocal cast because i know you said you didn't mention it in the beginning um well i just did i forgot to mention that it was like good <laughs> um like like i said elijah wood is good here like i don't know i haven't seen a role with him that i haven't enjoyed at least partially um, but he he brings a Elijah good, Woods the best. He brings a good a good sense of character to Nine. That I mean I mean Nine's kind of a in like a insert character, you know? Yeah. Like a I'm trying to think of the phrase, but like a point of view character for the yeah. audience. Um, but You're supposed he, to attach yourself. I was to about to say he he brings a good sense of character to the role, and John C. Riley's fun. Uh, Christopher Plummer. I wish. Uh, one was written a bit better because Christopher Plummer has a great like. No, he's a good. He's a, a good great actor. sound he's, for he's, it. Yeah. he's got a great voice for it, and he fits the <laughs> world really well. Yeah. In fact, I think even though I think Elijah Wood works really well, I think his voice is like the least <laughs> fitting in the world. Right. Um, no, uh, but he's um, just he's, Elijah Wood and John C. Riley both have like this weird uh, clarity to their voices that doesn't quite fit yeah. entirely well. Like like most of the other vocal cast, even what's her face, they have like this kind of grime, almost to like them. yeah, like a rasp or something um, to their voice. And then Elijah was like, "Hey guys, <laughs> hey guys," and John C. Riley's like, "Hey." hey. <laughs> 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 the John C. Riley impression. I can't do John C. Riley's voice. Well, he's got a very specific voice. He's got a good, he's got a good voice. I like, more voice. I like acting. John C. Riley's voice. He doesn't like John C. Riley. I like Elijah Wood's voice. I mean, These are great <laughs> actors. I, I really like both of them. Um, but but they do feel like they don't fully mesh with the rest of the cast. But not in any like. Not oh, in, don't mesh. It, it completely takes me out of the movie. <laughs> no, there's yeah. literally no problem with their vocal performances <laughs> or casting. <laughs> But yeah, no, that that was the only thing I really wanted to mention. Just that it has a solid vocal cast. Yeah, I don't. The only other thing I would think I would ask your opinion on for the podcast, like before we wrap up our <laughs> sure, discussion, yeah. is the end. What do you think yeah. of the end? Um, <sighs> the the soul rain, the burning of the the souls. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it entirely. Cause like, I like, I like the idea of it. And I actually got a lot more emotional this time at the end than I did the last time, yeah. which is a bit strange because like I kept complaining about how the character beats don't hit well, and then I'm <laughs> I'm crying at the end of the movie, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> um, the iconography is working, right? but really nine and five are the only two characters I ever really connected with that much, um, and those are the two that are they're they're kind of like the main characters. I don't know. You could argue seven's more of a main character than five is but still um i like five better (laughs) uh but yeah no the ending itself i like i really like the idea of like sending off the souls and everything like it's a it's a nice it's a nice sentiment at the end of a kind of dark movie um i don't know i i like the rain too i think it's i think it's cool yeah i think i think it plays into that one element that i was talking about earlier in terms of i wish a lot of the actual mechanics of the world were like delved into more again the yeah. whole you know his soul was split up into all of these <laughs> right different like that's another one of those kind of things where even even the the amulet thing that opens the machine 
um, like it very much ties into like alchemy stuff, Mm -hmm. but like we never talk about (laughs) alchemy at any point in the movie. Like there's just very, like it very much plays into that kind of element that makes me personally sad because I really love stuff like that in movies where it just feels like it didn't take the time to actually discuss what was going on. Yeah. Um, and I do think that like, the moment works pretty well. I think it's I think it's sweet with five. I think it's one of the most um, impactful moments of the movie is the I ending. Like, I like the imagery of everything burning. I like yeah. that it releases their souls into the cloud, <laughs> which then starts back the way. I think that's mm-hmm. a really cool idea. Yeah. Um, and, you know, once there's water, then life can start back. <laughs> The so microbes. on and so forth <laughs> um but i think i think it also just it doesn't feel as hollow as a lot of the other stuff but it mm-hmm. reminds me of just how not focused on on that conclusion like that conclusion is what it's coming to yeah so why do we have so much of the other i was about stuff? to say you don't get you don't get hardly any like alchemy build up i was about to or... say why aren't we focusing more on like the scientist and yeah. his inventions and the relationships between all of exactly, these people. Exactly, yeah. Because it doesn't feel like you're building any solid relationships with them. Yeah. Which, I mean, except for like 9 and 5, but even then, that's it's kind it's of It's very flimsy. rushed, yeah. and you have to really kind of work off of the chemistry between the voice actors. Yes. Um, but yeah, I don't know. But you, you make a good point, though, for sure. But no, that is a very good scene. <laughs> yeah, there, there's, a, there's quite a few, like, just solid scenes like well directed well staged good stuff but yeah that's i mean do you, that's have any, do you have any other things to mention not really nine? no i mean um, <laughs> again, i didn't have too much to say i about still it. I still really love nine yeah. i love its imagery i love its designs i love a lot of its scenes um i just wish it was that much more yeah exactly i wish it was a video game too that would be pretty <laughs> sick yeah they make it into either an open world game or a platformer one of the two Little Big Planet. Just go play Little Big Planet is really the takeaway. <laughs> no, somebody was somebody was talking about it and they were like the little big the little big planet movie is a lot darker than I thought. <laughs> Dude, Little Big Planet. That's such a cool franchise. It is. <laughs> Shout out to Little Big Planet. Shout out to Sackboy for real. Shout out to Sackboy for real. He's a real one. <laughs> uh but anyway, let's uh let's get into what we what else we watched what else we watched. over the course of this week. Good evening. (laughs) Good evening. Uh, So for those of you who do not know, at the end of all of our little episodes that we do. (laughs) All of these little episodes. These little podcast episodes. just do a little something. We do a little something. (laughs) Uh, We talk about everything that we've watched up until, like, in between episodes. Yes, Uh, indeed. Our our ratings, brief thoughts. This week we are going from the 8th. um, Oh, good. You knew the date. I was like, uh, I don't know what day this (laughs) But yeah. Um, so <laughs> so uh, let's get into it because because I've got quite a bit. To yeah, talk it, about. I mean I watched a lot of stuff um, for sure. On the eighth, I watched uh, Lego Scooby Doo Haunted Hollywood. Haunted Hollywood, baby. Um, <laughs> which which you know, <laughs> if it was if it was real anime, if know? it was like good animation, dang, uh, I might have like maybe <laughs> upped it to a three because it's not the most egregious thing in the world. Uh, but I have never before watched a movie that seems like it hates movie making. Not that like the movie is like oh bad, like like the structure is very like movie making y, <laughs> but like everything is like mean spirited making fun of making movies. Dang. <laughs> like and the, the mystery isn't that great. Like you literally it the moment the movie starts, if you think you know where it's going, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Um, it's always disappointing in a Scooby Doo movie. So it's not it's not that great. Uh, <laughs> I gave it a two and a half. Also on the eight. I watched Lego Scooby Doo Blowout Beach Bash. <laughs> um, it's good alliteration. Which, uh, again, I was watching these because I'm trying to watch every Scooby Doo movie. Uh, so I did these while I was doing school. <laughs> um, but Blowout Beach Bash is not good. But honestly, and I know I know Juliet, uh, other other <laughs> the person I know who's watched. Um, <laughs> All the Scooby Doo movies thought this one was worse than Haunted Hollywood, but I honestly liked it more than Haunted Hollywood. <laughs> I think it's just as bad. Nothing really makes sense. <laughs> it has no reason to be Legos. Like it just—it's just—it would be a weak Scooby Doo movie even if it had again good yeah. animation. Um, but like, 
I don't know. I enjoyed this. The other one just was like kind of miserable to get through. This one has some fun things. Dang. I also gave it a two and a half. Uh, and then later that night, we watched Outbreak for the very first time. Uh, Outbreak. 1995 uh, Apocalypse movie. Peterson. I guess not a, a full-on apocalypse it's movie. A, no, really, it is a... It is a uh, an Outbreak movie. An Outbreak movie. <laughs> a, uh, why can't I think of the pandemic movie ah That's yes what I was yes um i think it's an epidemic in this one <laughs> which is a very which is a very uh, interesting sect of movies given the world we live in today <laughs> uh but yeah i watched it i watched it for the monkey on the poster the and monkey on the poster is cool you know it delivered he needed to be in the movie more uh i was not the biggest fan uh go watch um contagion contagion that is a better, better movie it is better i just never really got behind any of the character or like the plot i thought the military plot I was like, really annoying i like dustin dumb. hoffman's character D- in dustin this. hoffman is really fun he's good in this, this is yeah. like I, I like dustin hoffman <laughs> so it's unfair but like i don't know the plot itself just <laughs> isn't that interesting i don't think they ever do any interesting ideas with like an outbreak like they never <laughs> use that idea that base idea in any interesting way like take something like um contagion um <laughs> You know, they used it in a very unique way that it ended up playing pretty similarly to how real life played out. Yeah. Um, whereas okay. this is just like, ooh, a bunch of dead people. I don't know. The I, military sure is this one military guy sure is evil. I thought it was I thought it was kinda great. So I don't know. I thought it was mostly boring. It's got it's got like a good sense of like stakes and I liked a lot of the What stakes? Like the character stakes what with character Dustin Hoffman. Stakes? His marriage, my Who <laughs> What? His wife sucks. You didn't get... Wow. Why do you hate women, Micah? Wow. Well. <laughs> Tell me. I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. I give it a four out of five. I gave it a three out of five. <laughs> uh, then on the ninth, we watched Candyman. The Candyman. Do, 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 do. Uh, the 2021 one. 2021 um, one, Micah? Yes. The new, the new one. <laughs> Um, I feel like I'm not qualified at all to talk about Candyman in any critical way. <laughs> female director. <laughs> it's um, a, a female director Jordan, talking about Jordan a, Peele on the screenplay. It's a it's a very uh, black culture centric movie. Like yeah. that's a lot of what it's covering. So, like I said, I feel very unequipped to criticize it <laughs> in any um, major way. <laughs> I mean, I don't, have, I don't have too much critical yeah. to say about it. I thought it was really fun. I thought it was real creepy. Well, I know um, it's kind of divisive, which. I think is interesting. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. <laughs> like I thought, I thought the plot was interesting. Yeah. I liked how, how it led. I thought the horror sequences were really fun. I thought the gore was really cool. Um, absolutely. I couldn't, yeah. the, the ending, uh, with, with his skin made me a little sick to my <laughs> stomach because of, uh, I always forget how to say it. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, I mean, Jordan Peele does a, such a good job. Like no matter what I've seen of his writing wise, he does a, wait, you, you apply it. Trypophobia. Trypophobia. I need to remember that because it's a very real thing that I have and it almost made me throw up at the end of this movie. But uh, Jordan Peele, no matter what he's writing, he does such a great job of curating uh, like good imagery and iconography in all of his horror, which is something I really appreciate and something that's in full effect here. I, I like it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe it's because we hadn't seen any of the other Candyman <laughs> movies that were like, uh, that's so good it's so uh, good maybe it's like weird if you know the other candy yeah. Man movies i, I like the, i like the art culture stuff in this too I, I think it works pretty well yeah i don't know i just i feel like the <laughs> themes all tie together yeah. pretty well i could like i said i could feel what i put this in my review i could feel what people say when they say it's a little half-baked and like kind of muddled because yeah. there's there's a little too I much going it. on with its themes that for it sure doesn't have time to tackle but i just thought it was really fun yeah no i was about to say at the end of the day i just had fun watching it so <laughs> i gave it a four out of five i also gave it a four out of five uh then also on the ninth uh we watched memories memories um, another 95 movie which uh I, I don't think we should go into too much depth <laughs> no. uh, with all of the different segments no. but it's an anthology film anthology film maybe uh, Satoshi Khan uh, wrote one of the segments. Heck yeah, man! Uh, which is one of the, which is the best segment. If you if you don't watch all of Memories, at least watch Magnetic Rose. It's which is the, the first, first one? It's the so. first segment, and it it that's honestly my biggest problem with Memories is it never really gets like it never reaches that level again. No, I told you one of my biggest <laughs> like qualms with most anthology films is they always put their best short first. <laughs> And then, like, you never ever lives <laughs> up to that. 
um, which this also does. Mike is looking at Ballad of Buster Scruggs right now. (laughs) (laughs) No, like most anthology films do that. They either start or end with their best. And this could have, this could have benefited by ending with Magnetic Rose. But yeah, no, I mean, uh, we said we weren't going to talk too much about it, but really my thoughts boil down to Magnetic Rose is like 10 of 10 masterpiece. Great sci-fi. I love it so much. Stink Bomb is too like, long. Stink Bomb is way too long for its premise. It has a, a pretty decent premise, actually. And, and Cannon Fodder is way too short for its Yeah, premise. and Cannon Fodder <laughs> just doesn't give enough time to like fully fill out its world. And it, sp- it spends a lot of its time on the wrong it makes things. Me, it makes me really sad because Cannon Fodder has really, really cool art direction yeah. and a really cool idea. Uh, but like we We've spent too much time <laughs> he, as this weird guy is yelling and yeah. having bad breath as the military is trying extremely hard to kill him somehow with no avail. It's really weird. Stink Bomb's not that good. No, Stink Bomb's easily the worst of the bunch. Uh, but I gave Memories a 4 out of 5. I also gave it a 4 out of 5. It's uh, good. Then on the 10th, I watched uh, A Fistful of Dollars. How do you, how do you um, get so many dollars, Micah? War <laughs> Sergio crimes. Leo, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, this, is, this is the first of, of the, the Man with No Name or something. Yes, I uh, believe that's what the name of the trilogy. Trilogy. Um, and it was cool watching the first one. I had only seen the good, the bad, and the ugly of his films. The longest one. Or Sergio Leone films in general. Yeah. Uh, and you can definitely tell that this is earlier, but it's cool to see the character do this, and it's very nice that it is short, because if it was longer, it would suck. Uh, <laughs> I gave it a four out of five. Uh, and on the 10th, I watched the short film version of Nine for the very first time. And also, I want to give a quick shout out to uh, Portrait of a 60% Perfect Man, Billy Wilder. It's a little like interview documentary that uh, someone did with Billy Wilder back in the 80s. And it is very good. Uh, go check it out. I think it's on YouTube <laughs> in its entirety. Uh, then also on the 10th. We together as a collective watched <laughs> collective. The Conjuring. Uh, this was a rewatch for me. I baby. just watched it for the first time, I think, like last week or something. Yeah, this was my first time um, seeing it. But shout out to The Conjuring. Shout out to James Wan. He's uh, such a fun director. <laughs> the Conjuring is a very fun <laughs> horror movie, especially on a rewatch. I think right? on a rewatch, it was just like, <laughs> since you know where everything is going, you can just really enjoy a lot of the elements for how good they are. It's just a fun, it's just a fun, like little homage to horror history. It's yeah, it's good stuff. Still the biggest fan of how the movie ends, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, I you, it... you don't seem to like any of James Wan's movie endings, Micah. <laughs> Maybe because he doesn't know how to end his movies. Do you, did you like Malignant's ending? I don't remember from our episode. Eh it's fine <laughs> yeah like it's fun but yeah no i gave i gave the conjuring a uh, four and a half out of five i gave it a very very good i liked it uh on the 11th uh <laughs> for some reason we turned on garfield garfield the movie. baby yeah I, I don't know is the title garfield the movie or is it just garfield i don't know it it's says on garfield. the poster it says garfield the movie on the poster on but it's just, it's just Gar- garfield it's probably just garfield but <laughs> this sucked I um, hated this movie. I, I don't know. It's not. It doesn't suck. It sucks. I would not say that the it plot's sucks. not good. The characters are not good. It doesn't work as a Garfield <laughs> adaptation. It, what do you? What is? What are you deriving enjoyment from? With I don't this? know. I think. I think it's fun. And What's fun? I don't His know. jokes aren't funny. <laughs> the world doesn't make sense. I don't have to defend my Garfield opinion. You do. <laughs> That's what Recently Logged is for, and this movie is not good. I don't think... No, I, I agree with that. It is not good, but it is not bad. It is bad. <laughs> Ravi, it's actively bad. I, I think it has, like, this kind of grotesque charm to it. Ravi, you're like me. You grew up with Garfield. How can you betray Garfield like this? No, it is not a Gar- it is not a Garfield movie. It's not a good Spider-Man movie. <laughs> it's, it's a good movie, but it's not a good Spider-Man movie. <laughs> no, you're wrong, dude. This this is the what what terrible miscasting of every character, but Liz. Okay, it what would a bad be, what a bad movie. It would be an actively bad movie if not for Jennifer Love Hewitt as Liz. Oh my gosh, <laughs> is my, I gave it is one my takeaway. I gave it one and a half. I gave it a two and a half. Oh, and I accidentally blinked over because uh, I just completely missed it. Uh, on the tenth, I also watched Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Uh, this is a rewatch. Uh, I hadn't seen <laughs> this it. was a rewatch. I hadn't seen it in forever, but it's it's fun. It's it's a fun movie. Nice. I like Tinkerbell. I give it three out of five. Tinkerbell nine double feature. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, then on the twelfth, because for some reason we were watching weird two thousands. 
<laughs> movies that are not that great. Uh, we watched Chicken Little. Chicken Little. Uh, shout out to Chicken Little. Gotta be one of my favorite weird, not that great movies. It's so weird. It's so mid, but like it's so fun. It's mid in a good way. Mid, mid but as a compliment. I'm I'm mid, and that's not. <laughs> we need the. I'm mid, and that's not cringe. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> uh yikes i love i love that movie. but yeah chicken little uh i gave it a three and a half out of five i gave it a three out of five we should do an episode everything on it it, it's so funny it is quite funny I then on the it. 12th uh watched star trek star trek uh jj abrams star trek Shout out to shout out to JJ Abrams. It was a rewatch. It's a very JJ Abrams movie, but honestly, I think it's a lot of elements of JJ Abrams working well. I was gonna say <laughs> this is his best, but uh, it's Mission Impossible Three. That's his <laughs> best. Uh, but yeah, no, this is JJ at his most blockbuster and like at his highest caliber of blockbuster. Like, I mean, I think. It's really weird to me that this movie exists and yet his Star Wars movies aren't that great. But see that's the thing, Micah. His his direction is still really good. It's just like garbage writing on his Star Wars movies. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> his direction like the camera work in uh, Rise of Skywalker is really good like it's really good camera work. Yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> but there's I don't know. Like I, I just don't understand how like <laughs> I don't even think this movie is like a masterpiece or anything, but I, just I like it's compared to the what, <laughs> compared to the Force <laughs> Awakens and Rise of Skywalker, I'm just like, why? Oh, that's why. Mm. He he was he didn't write this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, womp, that makes womp. sense. In fact, the people who wrote Mission Impossible Three wrote this movie. Yeah, <laughs> Alex Kurtzman and Roberto. I don't know how to say his last name. Hmm? Gorsi? I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm um, not sure. But they wrote it. <laughs> um, not J.J. Abrams. But yeah, no. Uh, Star Trek, if I had something to say about it, has a really good grasp of sci-fi blockbuster, not only imagery and tropes, but it does a really good job of executing them in a really fun and like, I don't know. It, it's one of the most popcorn movies I've seen in a while, and it does that really, really well. Does a, also, shout out to just the general premise of the Kelvin trilogy in Star Trek. It's a really neat idea, and I think it's executed very well in this one. I haven't seen Into Darkness yet that I'm aware of. I'm, I could be forgetting, though. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, this was very good. I gave it a four and a half out of five. I gave it a four out of five. Uh, and then the next day on the 13th, we, we, watched... we went out to the theaters, and we watched Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Bodies, Bodies. Bodies. Very good. Very cool. New I, was, I, didn't, I didn't really know fully what to expect from it. Yeah, neither did um, I. <laughs> but like, I had a really good time watching this in theaters. Uh, I would like it's it's really fun. All <laughs> of the so character, fun, all yeah. the characters do a really good job of being like like interesting and fun to play out in a story. I like was about this. to say th- this has such um, a surprisingly rich and like tight screenplay. The atmosphere I did not expect is really that. great. They have a lot of like there's a lot of symbolism for some yeah. reason. Like, what's going on? It's bodies, bodies, body. <laughs> no, I th- I honestly what I was expecting was just like a really kind of derivative sort of dumb but like still fun teen like slasher. And this is this is good. Like it's surprisingly clever and subversive. And yeah, I will say though, it's good. And, and, and Juliet, uh, Sam <laughs> Juliet from before, put in her review. She's a big horror fan as well. Um, she put in her review that like the trailer definitely makes you think that it's going to be a slasher film. Yeah, and it is not a slasher film. It is not. No, <laughs> and it it actually is all the better for it. Honestly, I would have I would have enjoyed a slasher film. I, I think I, slashers. It, I it's really, a really, I really fun. Genre. I really love slashers. It's a really fun genre. But honestly, like I'm so glad it is what it is. Shout out to Greg. Honestly, if this had slightly better uh, plot point structuring, like if it was yeah, if it was structured paced a out better. a little differently, I think it would be perfect. I Robbie, think it would be great. Shout out to Greg. <laughs> I, lo- I love Greg. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's um, a vet. <laughs> it's it's really good, man. Uh, yeah, I gave it a I gave it a four out of five, but I was kind of leaning towards I gave it four, a four and, and a half. half like I think on a rewatch, I would bump it up because I think I can't is, wait to own it. I think this Blue is the kind of movie that definitely would benefit a rewatch. <laughs> oh, for sure. Uh, go check it out and support it if you're old enough yeah, and okay enough, with the content if you're old enough to watch um, bodies 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 i recommend it, it is because very good. because this is it actually I would, love, I would love to support the actors in this besides pete davidson <laughs> shout out to like an actual like good commentary on gen z and their right and stuff like that Not like, like 
uh, this and everything everywhere all at once are both like rare form commentaries on a generation that don't feel super cringy <laughs> right like there are some elements that feel cringy but oh it's, yeah it's still, for sure <laughs> but it's still like on a whole actually feels like it's trying to do it with some nuance yeah i was about to say uh, like i said a lot smarter and a lot uh, better than I expected. Uh, it got, it got also a, very funny. Classy. It's a classy movie. <laughs> Cl- bodies, bodies, bodies. A classy movie. <laughs> uh, yeah, I gave it a four to five. Uh, and then on the fourteenth, uh, I was. Uh, that's all I watched. Like, um, was, like, like I watched nine on the fourteenth. On the thirteenth, I watched all of the I Am Groot shorts, um, which are he's he's like surprisingly evil and like mischaracterized in these. I don't know what it is. I I would not recommend them. Boo. They're they're not bad. They just feel like weird that they're Groot. Like, dude, you don't understand <laughs> the massacre of Groot's character when he became Baby Groot. Right. Like like not even inherently by the movies itself. I think Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. I was about to say I think well, two handles Baby but, Groot pretty but no, well. Actually. Everything else. <laughs> Every Everything other thing outside that has of touched specifically it. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two <laughs> handled the reborn Groot like yeah, a dumpster fire. He is really like mischaracterized <laughs> in like Infinity War and everything. And Infinity War and Endgame and T shirts and marketing yeah. and like everything outside Weird. of the movie itself, I think, handles Baby Groot in such a terrible way. But yeah, I guess the short films are just another facet of them mishandling his character because they're not bad i guess but they're not they i don't know they just feel weird and bad <laughs> um, they're not bad but they sure do they feel, feel bad. bad exactly um but yeah i then i watched nine and uh just this morning before we recorded this we watched the uh short film the version, short film which is very good uh shout yeah. out shout out to shane acker for real yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's what we watched. Thank you for tuning into the episode, and we'll we'll see you next week with Roderick Rules. We'll Roderick be back Rules. with the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. Heck yeah, okay. well, go watch some good movies. Go watch some. Go movies. watch. Go watch Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Should yeah. support it in theaters. Yeah. Go, go watch, watch Nine. Go watch Memories. Go watch. Uh, uh, what, what is Candyman. Candyman. Yeah. <laughs> so other other good movies. Go watch a good movie. Go watch that's, a good. That's movie. my recommendation. That's what you should do with your time. Uh, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.